against Moses, against man. And so as you look at your life, if I were to ask you, have you ever offended God? Have you ever sinned against man? For you to say, no, since I was born, I never did anything wrong. I've always been a good man, a good woman. That will be blasphemy because you'll be equating yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ who never sinned either against God or against man. But the point is this, the people speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul despises, loathes, belittles, is like bread. And the Lord sent fairy serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. You see, how is that? That's the law of sowing and reaping. That's the law of cause and effect. You see, everything that happens in this life, cause and effect, sowing and reaping. What does that mean? Oh, it simply means anything you sow, you're going to reap. It means if there is an action, there is an equal reaction to balance it up. If there is sin, there is going to be the consequence of sin. If there is offense, there is going to be the result of that offense. And that's why we have all those problems in our lives. That's why these people had the problems in their lives. They sinned against God and they sinned against man. And because of cause and effect, sowing and reaping, then all those calamities came on them. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it very instructive, I should say? The Lord sent fairy serpents among the people. If you are like me, I'm like you, there's something you know about those serpents, about those snakes, just like any other animal. Animals, serpents cannot reach the papers we have in our hand. Even if we show them your certificate, animals can't reach. And those serpents, those snakes, they cannot read whether somebody is a great man, highly placed woman, a lowly man, a poor man, somebody who is educated, an elite, or an illiterate, serpents, snakes, don't know any difference. And so the serpents came, and they went through the whole camp of the children of Israel and beat everyone, everyone, everyone. And as they were being beaten, consequence of sin, consequence of their evil, consequence of their offense against the Lord, it says that they were getting sick and then they were dying. And as you look at our lives today, and look, you look at what we suffer, and you look at the difficulties we're going through, you're going to find that because of this law of sowing and reaping, you sow wickedness, and then you're going to reap the judgment of God. You, you sow evil, and you're going to reap calamity, and it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter whether you are young or you are old. Sowing and reaping, that law is effective on anyone. Cause and effect, that is effective on everyone. Action and reaction, that takes place on everyone. And so it says, the Lord sent, the Lord established that law of sowing and reaping. That's the sense in which it's saying, serpents among the people. And they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore, that means because of that incident and because of the calamities that came on them, it says 
Therefore, the people came to Moses. What an opportunity they had. Yes, things were bad. They were getting sick. The consequence of sin was taking effect on them. Calamities were coming in on them. What they sowed, they were reaping. But then there is solution to every problem. And as you come here tonight, I can tell you there is solution to your problem. I said there is solution to your problem. And as you take the right attitude, and you come in the right way, you will see that that solution today will come in Jesus' name. It says, the people came to Moses. Why did they come to Moses? Because Moses was the representative of God for them. And they wanted God to solve their problem. Therefore, they came unto Moses. If you have uh, ever watched any crusade I held before, at the end of every crusade, at the end of every message, I give you a chance. And I say, come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Why are we saying that? You want to come out of your problem, out of your sin, out of your calamity, out of the evil things you are reaping now as a result of what you have done against the Lord. That's why we say come. That's what the people did here. It says, and the people came to Moses and said, they didn't just come. They opened their mouth. They said something. Because all Moses knew they had grumbled against God and they grumbled against him. Almighty God knew that they had grumbled against him and against man, against Moses. And yet they themselves, they had to say something. They had to open their mouths. You know, there are people that have the idea, all right, I'm coming to God. Like I'm doing God a favor and God knows what I've done. I don't need to confess or do anything about it. God knows. And I'm coming. Have I not even tried that I'm coming to God? You know what the Bible says? If we confess our sin, He is just and He is faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have to open your mouth and you have to tell the Lord that, Lord, I want my problem to be solved. I want forgiveness from you. I want salvation from you. I'm not looking down. I see my salvation is going to come from the ground. Neither am I looking back. I see my, my salvation is going to come from my past experiences. Neither am I looking around. I see my salvation, my deliverance is going to come from all the people around me. Neither am I looking inward. I see my salvation is going to come from me. Neither am I looking to the future. I see my salvation is going to come from a far away religion that we have not seen that will still come. I'm looking up to the Almighty God because God said, Look unto me and be ye saved, all ye the ends of the earth, because I am God and there is none else. That's why we're coming. But when we come, we do like these people did, and they said, We have seen. For we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Now do you see their confession? Their confession actually had two parts. Number one, general. Number two, specific. You see there are people that only remain with the general confession. We have sinned. Keep on talking. He wants to hear you. That's general. We have done what we shouldn't have done. Keep on confessing. You have not finished. That's general. We have not done what we should have done. Keep on talking. That's general. They said, we have seen. That's general. Then they became specific. Because we have spoken against the Lord. And we have spoken against you, Moses, our leader. It then became specific. You know, when you come to the Lord. And you are coming to the Lord tonight. I said you are coming to the Lord tonight. Then you open your mouth before the Lord. General 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You're a human being. Mankind has sinned against God. Everyone that is born of a woman is a sinner. In sin did my mother conceive me. In sin was I born. That's general now, become specific. What have you done? You open up and you will tell the Lord, Oh Lord, this is what I have done. They became specific. And then they now requested, Pray unto the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. Pray unto the Lord. They had prayed, they had asked, they had requested, they had demanded, they had done their part. And now it remained for Moses to do his part on their behalf. And then Moses prayed for the people. What a wonderful thing as we come together tonight. You will pray. I said you will pray. And then I will pray for you. And both of us, if we're in agreement together, your prayer, your request, your demand, and then my prayer for you, the Lord will see that our hearts are the same, and the Lord will answer our prayer. And after Moses prayed, then God gave a solution. In verse 8, And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. When he looketh upon that serpent of brass, looking, looking by faith, and looking at the uplifted serpent, Below is being beaten by literal serpents, literal snakes. But now it's looking up to the uplifted serpent. And it says, Everyone that is beaten, when he looketh up, shall live. And that's exactly what they did in verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole lifting it up above everyone and it came to pass that means it so happened that if a serpent had beaten any man any man educated not educated employed unemployed a man or a woman somebody just coming for the first time or somebody who had done this before but the point is he has been beaten by a serpent and then it says if the serpent had beaten any man then it says in that verse 9 when he beheld when he looked when he obeyed the lord and did what the lord had said when he looketh, or when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Why am I reading that story to you? I'm reading to you for you to see how all the people responded to the commandment of the Lord, to the instruction of the Lord, that if the effect of sin is rampaging your life right now, and if the consequences of sin are taking hold on your life right now that there is a solution here tonight and deliverance is coming to you and healing is coming to you and salvation is coming to you but you have a part to play and when you play your part as the lord has commanded you and called you then the almighty god will play his part that's why jesus said in john chapter 3 verse 14. John chapter 3 verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the Lord Jesus Christ confirmed the reality of that story I just read to you now. And Jesus said, as Moses lifted up 
the serpent in the wilderness even so in the same way must the son of man be lifted up in the same way as that serpent was lifted up the son of god jesus christ the lamb of god who died to take our sins away even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever whosoever young or old whosoever a man or a woman whosoever educated or illiterate whosoever wherever you are coming from deliverance is available for you salvation is available for you that whosoever believes in him should not perish you will not perish i said you will not perish this calamity this consequence of sin this effect of the law of sowing and reaping in your life will not destroy you the moment you come to christ and you believe on the lord jesus christ it says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life well it means that number one you have life number two you have eternal life everlasting life number three it is spiritual life and that spiritual life will cancel from your life every other consequence of sin and here is your chance here is your privilege i read the story to you men and women like you and like you and me how they came to moses how they came to the lord and they said yes we have sinned we have not done right we sinned against god and was sinned against a fellow man. And then the Lord said, the solution is this, to lift up that serpent, and whosoever will look on that serpent, of brass will live. And today, Jesus Christ has been lifted up on 